Hello, and welcome to another in the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript Learn to Code series. Today, we are going to be going through the Connect4 example. Um, all of the examples that I uh, talk through in all of my videos are available on a GitHub, GitHub repository, and you can find them all. This is the repository here. I will have links down below, um, but you can find this in the JavaScripts folder. And then it is the connect4.html, and that is the single file that includes all the CSS, JavaScript, and HTML for this example. Um, so Connect4 is a fairly popular, well-known um, children's game or game that children tend to play. And um, it goes by having alternating players. And the first player drops one of their tokens into the board here. And the next player drops their token, and their token falls. And the goal is to get four in a row. Um, so this is a working version of it. It starts with the red player, now it's the blue player's turn. So the blue player drops, then the red player, and then the blue, and the red, and it keeps going until someone has four in a row. So you can have four in a line here, you can have four going up and down, and you can have four going in a diagonal direction. Um, so that is how it works and what it looks like. Uh, this is not a very flashy version. As you see, there was no animation. It kind of just fell to the bottom. But uh, the goal was to keep it as simple as possible so that um, it was as easy to understand and you can get advanced as you'd like. So let's jump into the code. Okay, here we have all the code. Uh, I've included a whole bunch of comments. If you haven't, uh, if you don't have a basic knowledge of HTML, you can definitely go. I have an intro to HTML, which will talk about some basics here and catch you up enough for what you'll need to know to understand what's going on here. Um, if you haven't done any of that, this might be a little foreign to you, but you're still welcome to take this code and run it and play with it and um, go through it as it is. So I have comments here and I have comments here. So there's two different styles of comments because this is JavaScript. So everything in here is a type of text JavaScript. So I have to use JavaScript commenting, which uses either um, the two forward slashes or a forward slash and a star. And that ends with that. Um, or I have the comments here. So comments, uh, again, just quickly, uh, they are ignored when it comes to the actual code itself. So the computer will not try to read comments. The comments are there for you. So it's meant to explain. So up here explains, oh, um, yeah, please see beat, uh, beatdemo.html for more details on how this code works. Apparently I had a copy-paste error, and this should be, say, connect4. All right, so I've got um, my HTML here. I have all my... Um, all my comments, I have a lot of comments. You normally won't see this much comments, but since this is a learning example, I wanted to include as much as I possibly could. Um, so I, as you can see, it's just lots and lots of comments. So all the JavaScript is up here. Um, it is often good form to take all your JavaScript and put it in a different file. Uh, functionally, it does not change anything. Uh, but it is easier to maintain. I have put everything in a single file to make it easier to learn and so that if you wanted to pass that file around or copy it uh, or make changes, you can easily do that without having to worry about which JavaScript files and CSS files go, go with what. Um, there's some additional formatting here. So these lines that show you where you have an opening and closing braces and all of that. This is all done through my text editor, which is Notepad++, which I will leave a link to in the description as well. So we have the end of our script, then we have our style tag. So this is the CSS for the game here. And then we have our actual HTML. So we've got our body, we've got our header. So our header says connect4. We have the instructions, and then we have the game itself. So we have a button that is begin game and on click, it begins the game. So it runs this function begin game. So we will get to that first, but let's get through the rest of the HTML. So then we have the game board and we have game info. So game info we're going to use to populate with the game specific information, switch back. So our game info is right here. So current player is player two and they are blue. This is our game info. We had our button. And then as we said, we had our header and our descriptions. 
and then we go down to our game table. So our game table is where our game is going to take place. Now, this game, as you can see, you know, because it's it's very essentially it's a it is a table. It's you know a grid of um, a grid of spaces. So the easiest way to represent that is with a table. Uh, you could do it with divs. There's definitely there's no right there's no one right way to do things. But uh, this was the way I chose to do this. And I have a bunch of buttons here. And this one calls function drop with the parameter zero. Um, so we have the same function. And the only thing that's changing is the drop. So that tells us which row we're going to be drop or which column, sorry, we're going to be dropping down into. And then um, I have a lot of comments, so I'm not going to read through them. But this generates the board for us. So if I go back to the board. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven columns and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So instead of writing seven times six um, amount of HTML for each table row and table um, table data, what I have done is programmatically write that. So I have two for loops. So I have a for loop here. So var row equals uh, zero and row is less than or equal to five and row plus plus and that and then i have inside here columns so this is going to go six times because zero to five is six numbers because it has zero and zero to six is seven times so we're going to have seven table data so seven row uh, seven columns and then rows and this is going to dynamically write the row and the column and that's going to write, so this is actually using JavaScript to write HTML. So I'm not going to go into this too much in depth because I have, again, the comments. And I want to more talk about the game code and the game logic. Uh, but you can play with, the, play with this. The one thing I do want to talk about is the use of zero. So I could have here said from row one to row six. And that might, that might be a little more human obvious. Um, but in JavaScript, everything starts at zero. So when you have an array, which is a collection, a variable that, that holds, um, <clears throat> holds different values at different positions, everything starts at zero. So it is easier to start everything at zero than it is to remember where you've started things at one and where you haven't. Um, so it's, it's kind of just one of those things that at first can be really kind of complicated to wrap your head around for some people. Uh, I know for me, especially because I come from other programming languages where that is not the case. Um, but, you know, zero is where most numbering things start, especially in JavaScript. So that's why I started with zero. Um, and just to go through a for loop, because we're going to have them later, but well, it's here and a little more obvious. So a for loop has three parameters. The first is you get a chance to define a variable a variable and say this is what I want. So for variable, so we're creating a variable, a variable, we're naming it row, and then we're assigning it a value of zero. So it starts at zero. Then we have our condition. So our condition will run this loop as long as this is true. So um, it is now so every time it goes through, it's gonna say, is the variable row? less than or equal to five. So let's just go through a, a simple basic first case. So it starts and we go four, okay, um, create the variable row, make it equal to zero. Is row, which is now equal to zero, less than or equal to five? Yes, that's true. Okay, great, so go through everything. So it's gonna go through and it's gonna run all this code. Then it goes back up to the top and it says, okay, I finished the code, now what? So what we're going to do is take our row and then do a um, do an um, we're going to take our row and we're going to do something called a an increment. So we're going to increment the value of row, which means add one. So this is the equivalent to writing row equals row plus one. But as you see, row plus plus is less characters and is a little simpler to read once you know what it stands for. Uh, you can also do minus minus. So if you wanted to um, make the value less, you just do row minus minus. 
All right, so row plus plus means row is equals one. So now we go through here again. So row is one. Is one less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. Okay, do it again. Now row plus plus, row is two. Do it again, row is three. Do it again, row is four. Row is five, row is six. Is six less than or equal to five? Nope, nope, it's not. All right, continue on and go to the next thing. So that is, this is the code um, here. So really it's one, two, three, four, five five, six lines of code, once you take away the comments, so six lines of code writes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times six, which is 42, 43, 43, 40, I don't know, I can't math. Um, it is some number, this many number of lines of code. Uh, so it saves a lot, so the JavaScript is really good there. All right, so let's get to the actual game code itself. Um, I'm going to go again fairly quickly through this because you're welcome to watch it as many times as you want and you have the code you can play with it and the comments should explain more detail than what I'm giving you here so the first thing was and I'm sorry for the scrolls first thing was we have body on load begin game so there's a lot of complex things happening here <clears throat> and I will try my best to simplify it when an HTML document is loaded in the browser, the, uh, a lot of things happen in the background. And then something is triggered, there's an event, and that event is called load. And load happens when, um, as it sounds like, when the page is loaded. And loaded means <clears throat> that the HTML has all downloaded, that it has displayed on the page, and that all the resources have downloaded. So that is load. So at that time, so once we've got everything, run this function begin game. So now we'll go all the way up to begin game. So I have a function here within my JavaScript and it's called begin game. And while I'm here, I will talk about some things up here. So I have defined some variables and variables are for a way for us to store values that we want to do we want to use later. Um, so I am defining some variables up here uh, so that we can use them later in the code. If you define something only within a function, you can't use it elsewhere. So this is what's called the global scope. Um, so I define anything that I want to use anywhere uh, up here. So I have one for game active, and this is a Boolean, meaning the value is either true or false. Uh, I have an active player. So the active player is going to be, as I note here, the number of the active player. So either one or two. So I default it to zero, meaning that the game is not yet active and there is no active player. I have the game board, and then I've got two things here, which are the... Um, they're the non-curly braces. They're the, they're the characters that are right next to your P key if you're on an English keyboard or a right below the minus and plus sign. So these denote that I am creating in JavaScript an array. So an array is like a collection and it holds mul multiple values um, and it lets me, uh, lets me call on them in a certain way. So I'll show that more later. Uh, player color is also an array. And then for player color, so I have player color one is going to be red and player color two is going to be blue. So you can change this. You could make, uh, you can make it green. You can make it however. Um, you'll see later how that works. <clears throat> so now if we go into begin game, uh, again, a lot of comments here. I'm trying my best to explain not only what I'm doing within the programming language, but what I'm doing within the game itself. So if we try to run this function and the game is currently active so if game active double equals true return false now something because this is my first javascript tutorial that i'm going to talk about is what is the difference between equal equal and double equal so i could do this game active equals true return. So these two statements are extremely different and it's really important to understand the difference. So this, a single equal, is known as an assignation. And 
what that is, what that means is that it's assigning a value. So like up here, where we say player choice one, player color one equals red, we are assigning this value. So we say this variable now equals this. So if we do that down here and say game active equals true, we are saying set this variable to true. And somewhat logically or illogically, that returns true. Because what happens is JavaScript says, yes, I can actually set game active equal to true. So this is true. Which also means if I wrote game active equals false, this would also say, yeah, I can set game active equals false. So I'm going to return true. Now, the double equals says compare these two values. So this is saying, is game active equal to this side? So for example, if I were to say five equals four plus one, that would be true. Because five does equal four plus one. Okay. So that is, so the double equal is really important. Um, I can tell you, I personally typo all the time and do a single equals and then my code doesn't work right. And I'm like, why doesn't it work? And it just needs a double, just needs a double. Okay, so then we have return false. So every function has the ability to return a value. And what happens is when you return a value, the function is done. So it's kind of like if you give someone a task, if you say here, do the laundry, the return you expect is clean laundry. So it's you hand your dirty laundry, they perform the function with your dirty laundry, and then they return, hopefully, the clean laundry. Um, but in the case, let's say you never actually give them laundry. So let's just say you say, hey, do laundry, and you don't give them laundry, then they would immediately return, and they would probably return false, because they would say, hey, you didn't, you know, I didn't complete your task because you didn't actually give me any laundry. So if game active equals true, then return false. All right. So then the next thing we want to do is set game active equals true. So that way we have the game has started. So one, this present prevents someone from clicking this button like a hundred times. So it's like, oh yeah, I want to play the game. Okay, click, go, 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 go. Um, that could break the game. It could cause, you know, unexpected things to happen. So immediately I want to set this true, which means if I click this again, then game active is going to be true. So return false. Okay. So now we get into actual meat of it. So we're resetting the game board. So now uh, I talked a little bit about an array. So let's talk about what an array does. So an array lets us use the same variable name and then have a variable way to call elements within that. So it's that that can be a lot. You're using a variable to access a variable and then get variables. Um, so it may sound like a lot, but it's really just an easy shorthand way. So let's say we wanted to say game board position zero, zero, or game board position one, zero, game board position two, zero. So if we were to write every variable, so let's take the whole game board and let's bring that up. So if we were to try and reference this and say, this is zero, zero, this is zero, one, this is zero, two, zero, three, but we had a variable for each one of these, it, it would just, the code would be huge. It would be crazy long. Whereas we can shorten it by just saying we have game board, There, save it. All right. We have game board and we have a row. And then we have with that each row is an array and that row has a column. So now whenever we want to access something, we do game board row column. So if we wanted, so I set things up and again, you can, you can change this, this, there's no right way to do things. Um, but I chose to do it. The top left is zero, zero. So in my case, up here. So if I want to access the top left field, I would do game board zero, zero. If I wanted the bottom right, I would do game board five, six. So looking at our code. So game board zero, 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 one, zero, two. And that way we can programmatically access all of these elements much quicker. 
Okay. So I reset the entire game board. So I have another for loop. So just like I drew it, now in JavaScript, I'm going to set all of the variables to zero, all of the values to zero. So I have a row going from zero to five. Now, um, I did not put an int. Um, it will default it to int, but I could. I could do var, um, sorry, row, uh, sorry, var, not int. So I could do this, I don't have to. Um, so to keep it short, I've kept it as such. So for row equals zero, row less than or equal to five, row plus plus. So keep going up. So start with zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Create it, create it as a row, uh, create it as an array, then populate the array. So column, from zero to six, column plus plus. So set the row, uh, game board row, column equal to zero. So at the end of this, every single vowel value in here, so from zero, 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 one, zero, two, you know, five, four, whatever, all of these, the ultimate value for all of these will be zero, which means it's an empty board. Then I run through three functions draw board, active player equals one, so set the set the first player to go and then set up turn so draw board is going to do what it sounds like it's going to draw the board the way it should be <clears throat> active player is not a function we're just assigning a value to a variable and then set up turn is going to set up the turn and let the user go and kind of handle the input so we'll go through draw board because i think that's the um you know that's obviously the next thing it's called so draw board will draw the board. Um, I have a little bit more there in the comments. Okay. So we are drawing the board. So the first thing we're going to do is check for win. So check for win, we'll see if the player has won. Um, if the player has won, we don't want the person to continue playing. So um, more things will happen. We will go into this later uh, because it is probably one of the more complex ones. Um, and let's go through drawing the board. Okay, so I have next four, call equals zero, call less than or equal to six, call plus plus. Now, I did this differently to show you that spacing doesn't always matter. And when I say doesn't always, usually it, it, just, it just doesn't matter. So I could do this. So white space is essentially, ooh, essentially ignored. So all of that is, a, is the same thing. The end of the line is the semicolon. So I could also draw this like this if I wanted, um, but this would be uh, just taking up a lot of space. So that's why it's not standard to do that. Okay. So again, going from column zero to column six, column plus plus, then go from row zero to row five, plus plus, and I could have done this in a different order too. I could have done row first, then column, or column first, then row. It, that was just kind of how it came to me when I did it. So again, I'm iterating through each column and each row. So I'm going through all of the possible possibilities. And I am running a function document get element by ID. So document dot get element by ID is going to take my document, which is my HTML document, and go through everything looking for something with the ID of square plus row underscore plus column. So when you're using a plus in JavaScript, this will append, um, it will join this together. So this isn't a math plus. So if you take two, two uh, letters, uh, words or strings and try to add them, so use a plus, it will do something called concatenate. So in this case, I'm looking at square, you know, uh, zero, uh, zero, square, one, zero, dot, dot, dot. So it's going to keep going. So that's what it's looking for. So it's loading the element. So square underscore row underscore column dot inner HTML. So that's the, the content within that element. And I am setting it to a span with the class of piece 
and player with whatever the value of that game, that, that piece of the board is. So what this is doing here um, is setting the value of each of these. So all of these, the way they look, is all based off of CSS. So there's a class. So this is a player zero class. So player zero means that this piece has a gray background. This is a player two piece, which means it has a blue background. And this is a red piece. So what I'm doing is I have the, the actual game board is stored in a variable. And that variable is invisible to the front end. Um, JavaScript knows what it is, but the HTML and the CSS has no clue. So then what I'm doing is every turn when I write draw board, it is going through the, the JavaScript board and one by one determining which each piece should be. So it's like, all right, you're a zero, you're a zero, you're a zero, you're a zero, et cetera, et cetera. You're a one, you're a two. So right now I'm player two. And if I'm going to drop this one here, it's going to go to the bottom and change this to a two. Then it's going to draw the board and go through everything again. And when it hits here, it's going to say, give this the class of player two, which has a blue background. If I drop, boop, it's got a blue background. Perfect. All right. So that is what draw board is doing. So draw board is a fairly simple. Now you could, you could change this so that, you know, when, when it's drawing the board, if it's of a different value, it can do something splashy and kind of, you know, have some cool effect. So there's a lot that can be done in here, but this really is, is the basics. All right. As I said, we'll go to check for win later. Um, just because it's, it's a long one, um, as you can see. All right, so set up turn is the next one in our list, if you remember. So I'll go back up here. So we had draw board, we have active player, and then set up turn. If I go to set up turn, if the game is active, now here I don't have any equation. So I don't say if game is active equals true. Because game active is a Boolean already, which means it is either true or false. So if true is true, if false is false. Um, so it's just kind of just shorthand. Uh, you can, there's nothing wrong with saying equals equals true. Um, but for the most part, especially if you name your variables, because I think this, I personally think this reads really well. If game is active, than, you know, do what's below. Okay. So display the current player and create a span with a class of player number, yada, yada. Okay. So document.getElementID by ID. So same thing as we were doing by before. Inner HTML. So we are setting the value um, for, that, for that div or that span. So current player is player plus active player. So active players are variable that is a number. It is one or two. And then we create a little span, which has the class of player, active player, Ooh. as the class of active player. And we show the player color, active player. So player color, active player, we set above as being either red or blue. If I quickly switch over, we can see current player, colon, player one, so that's the variable, and then player one is red. So if I drop one, so I play that move, it updates it and says current player, player two, is blue. Okay, so now that's it for our loop. So at this point, our program is sitting and waiting. So right now, there is no computation. There is nothing happening at all. Everything's just sitting there being fine, hunky-dory. So that's where these buttons come in. So we have drop, 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 drop. So if we go back and take a look at the HTML that we generated all the way at the bottom. So we had this, the table header. And the table headers had a button on click drop zero. So now let's look into that function. So when you click this button, so on click, we are going to drop and then ha pass in the parameter zero. So I'm going to take a look here. All right, so drop will add a piece to the lowest available in the column. So function drop 
and then we're passing in the column. So as I said, we had a parameter. So this is drop zero, drop one, two, three, four, five, six. So that will tell you what column we're dropping it into. All right, so now what we need to do uh, logically uh, for this game is we need to find the first free available space. So you want to start from the top and work your way down until you find a piece that has something in it. And then you want to go to the one above that. So what we're going to do here is we are, or, or you can go the other way around, which is what I've done, which is start from the bottom and look for the first empty row. Um, so as I said, <laughs> as I've said before, there's no wrong or right, or there's not one right way to do something. So if we look for the lowest point in this row, it's open. The opposite of our loop above, uh, as we're going to start from the bottom. So for row equals five, so we start row equals five. Row is greater than or equal to zero, row minus minus. So now, again, we're using the minus minus. So what we're doing is we're checking game board row column equals zero. So zero is not owned by any player. So if we find that, then game board row column equals active player. So set that to the active player. Draw the board and switch player. So if the active player is equal to one, so if the active player is one, set him to set the active player to two. Else, so if this condition, if this is not true, what should we do? We'll do this. So there is there's a different way to write this that is a little bit that is shorter. I don't want to call it cleaner um, because if you have never seen it before, it is really, really hard to kind of grasp around. And it's called a tertiary um, assignation. But what I can do here is I could, because you might see this around, which is why I'm writing it. Um, active player equals active player equals one, two, one. Um, this is how you do it in. Um, in PHP, I forget how to do it in JavaScript. I think it's similar, but it basically this code can be rewritten as this. I think this, in some cases, can can be much more confusing. But what it's doing is saying set active player equal to well, if active player is one, then do it two, otherwise one. Um, you might see this if you see things that look like this. Then what you're doing, you're looking at a tertiary. Um, or trinary, trinary, not tertiary. My apologies. It's a trinary. Um, so you're looking at a trinary. I wouldn't worry about it, but I'm just mentioning it because you might see it. All right. So we we set the board to the to the um to the current player. We change the current player, and then we set up the turn. So setting up the turn says, all right, now you know next person can go. So the last piece is then checking to see have you won the game. So this has a lot of code, but is actually somewhat, it's a lot of code in the sheer sense that you just need to have a lot of code. Um, because there's a few ways that the person can win. So let's quickly recap that. So a person can win having four in a row, left and right. They can have four in a row up and down, and they can have four in a row in a diagonal. So if you're in a diagonal, you can't possibly win. There are certain areas of the board, so a diagonal down can't win starting here, and they can't win starting here because there's only three. If you're trying to win upward, you can't win here, can't win here, can't win here. So there are certain circumstances where you want to know where your height and your, you know, your where to best check. So I've just done a lot of math and a lot of thinking and a lot of trial and error to get it to work. But ultimately, um, I've come up with this set of instructions. You can probably come up with something cleaner. And if you do, please leave the code in the comments. I would love to uh, add it to the code base. Um, but this is what I came up with. So first off, we have to check for each player. So for i equals 1, i is less than or equal to 2, i plus plus. So I do realize that this, you know, this really is just 
essentially running through a loop twice, and this can be written differently, but this is kind of how I did it. So check for each player. So four, column equals zero, column less than or equal to two, column plus plus. So in this case, we're checking left to right. So when you check left to right, you, you only have to check 0, 1, and 2, because if you start, or 0, 1, 2, and 3, because if you start here at 4, you, you just can't have enough to have 4 in a row. So I have from row 0 to 5, um, and I might have messed that up. I might not be going far enough to check. Um, so yeah, so there's bugs, definitely, and that's okay. So check the game board and go through and check here. Check the col check the row and column plus one and the row and column plus two and the row and column plus three. So go from column all the way. So column zero, one, two, and I think I need to make that three. So let's save that and let's just do a quick test. Okay, so let's drop there, and then you can drop there, there, and let's see. Okay, so that one does work. Okay, so I did need to add one to it. Okay, so in this case, bam, it's showing the winner is one. I'm so glad I'm doing these. Uh, all right, so I missed one there. So what this do does is checks through, and if that condition is true, so if we find a player and that player goes across, then run end game with the player that was found. And then return true, which means stop checking to see if anyone else won because someone has already won. So now we do the exact same concept again with a different set of information. So here again, both players, we're going from column zero to column six because we have all the possible columns that can look, and we look straight down. So from row zero to two, we check and then we add to the row. So row plus one, row plus two, and row plus three. Then we check a diagonal down. So it's all, this is all the same code. The only thing that's changing is the columns and row ranges that I'm choosing to check and this code here. So I'm checking in this case, plus and plus means going down in a diagonal. Um, if it's just plus and, neg uh, plus and staying the same, it's checking up and down. And then I check the diagonal up. So that would be row minus and column plus. So that would be that. So I check those four. So then we look at our final function, which is function end game. And then I pass in the parameter winning player. So active game equals false. So the game is done, which means that we have the ability to start the game over. And then document dot get element by ID, the game info. So my game info place and the inner HTML is winner colon winning player number. All right, and the last piece I'm gonna go through is the CSS. Before doing so, I wanna say a few things. I have rushed through this, and there's a lot to it, especially if this is your first time seeing JavaScript or this is kind of your first time trying to really dig in and learn. Just play. Um, that is how I learned, and uh, I'm not saying that I've figured it all out, but um, JavaScript is, is uh, fairly forgiving in the sense that, you know, you've got a backup of all the code. So if you completely mess something up and it's not working, just go download it again. Um, this is easy to tweak. This is easy to play with. Um, you can add, you can add rows, you can take columns away. Uh, you're, you're kind of free. It doesn't cost any money to download this. You have a web browser if you're watching this. Um, so just you know, feel free to play and you don't have to understand how everything works to get this to work. Um, for example, document.getElementById and, um, and, and understanding onload. I didn't understand those concepts until five years into actual programming. And when I was like a mid-level developer, did I truly understand how they worked? But the fact that I knew they worked and I could copy and paste and kind of write some code, that's all that you need in most cases. Um, so don't be intimidated if there's things that kind of went, went too fast or if there's something you don't understand. 
if it works, that then it's it's okay. And if it doesn't work, then just you know play with something until it does work or go back. Um, as you've seen, this is a fully working example. All right, so the last things I want to touch on is just the style. So the body, I've added some padding. I added eight pixels of padding to the top and bottom and 16 to the left and right. And that just makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, not necessary, but it gives a little border here and a little border up there. Um, the H1 also gives a border. So that's, that's no big thing. So I have the click button. So the click button has a height, a width, a border radius, and a background color and all of that jazz. So this is a click button. Um, is that correct? Yeah, is that my click button? Yes. So um, I might not have even been using that. Yeah, I was, I was originally going to have this here, so I'm not even using the click button. So you could ignore that. All right. So make each piece square. So I have a piece. So each item here is a piece. So each of these is a piece. So first I have the default stylings to make it look like a button or make it look like a, you know, a round piece in the actual board. So the height and width are 32 pixels, which makes it square. Display is block. This makes it so that even though there's no content inside it, it still manages to have a height and width. I gave it a border radius of 16 pixels. 16 is half of 32, so it makes it look round. Margin left, margin right, auto. This is the magic you need to make things centered. Um, even if you don't understand what it is, this centers things. That's the best way to explain it in CSS. So now I have player zero, player one, and player two. So these are the classes that are added to make the board have color and look as though a certain piece is there. Player zero is background color all Ds. This is a light gray color, as you saw. Player one, the background color is FF0000, which is RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So the red is all the way up, which means it is a red color. And player two is a red, green, blue. Two Fs in the blue uh, is all the way in the blue. And set the board to have um, the board square to having dark gray border uh, 36. So the board square has a border and a height and width. Um, so the board square is where the um, is this. So each of these pieces has a board square. So that is all the CSS. Um, not terribly exciting on the CSS side. And I went through all the JavaScript. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the um, comment section below. And if you want, again, I have links below to the Learn to Code um, GitHub repository. I will have links to um, other videos or the rest of the playlist. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. And I uh, hope this helps and give it a download, give it a try. And uh, if you make something neat with it, uh, post a link as well or post the code. Uh, I'd love to see what you do. All right. Thanks. Bye.